Hello colorful quilters and welcome back to another installment of the super simple sampler. This is a series of blocks. We're making six inches. They finish six inches and we're making a total of 36 of them. The instructions are free on my website and I will put the link in the comments below this video so that you can find the page with all of the blocks. I've decided to make videos about some of the blocks to show you some key skills and hopefully get you inspired to join and sew along with me. You can make any one of the blocks, you can make all 36 of them, you can make two of each one for whatever size quilt that you plan to make. Um, for my project, I am using all pink fabrics and you'll find an explanation for why they're all pink um, on the blog post on my website. So uh, check that out. I'll put some links in the comments. And also please be sure and leave me comments if you have questions or want to see more, um, if you have suggestions, or if you're working on the blocks and you'd like to show me, I would love to see them. Okay, so today's project is flying geese. I'm gonna show you two techniques for making flying geese to make them super easy. And we are doing block number 19 for this demonstration. So the first technique. With block number 19, we need to make eight flying geese units. So for the first technique, I'm gonna make four of them this way. I need four rectangles that are two inches by three and a half. So four rectangles, two inches by three and a half, and eight squares that are two inches each. Okay, so I'll, I'm just gonna do squares, rectangles. I don't have to mess around with triangles at all. So for this to start out with, I'm going to turn one of the two inch squares right sides facing one of the rectangles. And it's gonna be off to one side so that it lines up with th three side three sides line up with each other and some of the larger rectangle is overhanging now to from sewing i'm going to start in the center of the rectangle the larger rectangle at the corner of the square and sew straight across you can use your preferred method for marking these one way of doing it is simply taking a ruler and drawing a line from corner to corner to give you a diagonal line to sew on. One technique that I really like to do is simply folding the square of fabric and creasing it to mark the diagonal line. I find that this is quick and I can just do it while I'm standing right at my sewing machine as I go, as I'm sewing and chain piecing the blocks. Okay, so just to get started, I am going to sew along that marked line and then press the fabric open. Now you can chain piece these, which is what I would ordinarily do so that I can make a whole bunch of them at once. By chain piecing, I just mean that I will add one of these squares, sew the diagonal, diagonal seam on all four of my units at once, just one right after the other, feeding them through the machine, and then I can cut them apart, press them all at once, and go on to the next step. By doing that, I work a little bit faster, and it saves me thread and having to pull the, the pieces in and out of the machine with each step for each piece. Okay, so I can do the same step on all of the pieces all at once. Here's my first rectangle with the square attached, and as you can see, when I sew on the marked line, I can flip it open and it gives me a half square triangle. Now, first thing I'm going to do before I go on is trim that rec trim the square and background fabric to about a quarter inch from the seam and press that open. Okay, once my unit is pressed, I'm going to cut off that excess thread on both ends. You see, I've got this little unit. I'm gonna repeat the same step, the same step again on the other side of the rectangle. So again, I'm lining up one of the squares with the opposite end of the rectangle. I'm gonna fold it in half 
to crease, that's going to give me my sewing line. Okay. One little trick to keep in mind when you're sewing units like this, if you sew directly on the line or even a little bit to the inside of it, your piece, when you turn it and press it, is going to end up a little bit too small. So what I like to keep in mind is the width of my thread is going to take up a little bit of space in there. So go ahead and sew just to the ends, just, excuse me, just to the outside of your marked line, and I mean not a lot, literally just the width of your thread to the inside, excuse me, to the outside of that marked line, and that way when you flip this over you'll have a really nice crisp triangle and it'll be exactly the right size to fill in that space just like you want it. Okay, and again I'm going to start sewing in the middle of my rectangle, the corner of my square. Just as a quick tip, the reason that I start sewing in the middle of the rectangle and not at the corner and go in is that a lot of times you'll find that this, this narrow little corner going in into your feed dogs and under your presser foot is going to get wrinkled up and chewed up and it just kind of makes a mess of your block. So always start when you're making one of these units, start by sewing at the bottom of the excuse at the bottom at the at the center of the rectangle and so out toward the point out toward the corner rather than from the corner into the middle you're going to get much cleaner results that way and it'll save you some headaches of having to wrestle the fabric out of your machine Okay, same thing again. Trim my threads. I'm going to go to my iron and press, press that open. And that gives me a nice little flying geese unit. I do need to trim the outside seam allowance of that second one I sewed. Like just to the outside, about a quarter of an inch. And then when it's opened up, I have a, a perfect little flying goose unit, flying goose unit, that is three and a half by two inches. And I'm gonna make four of those using this technique. For our second technique, we are starting out with a square that is four and a half inches and I cut it diagonally both directions to get four half square triangles. Okay, so those are going to be the inside pieces of my flying geese. Okay, to make these background pieces, I am going to cut, oh, those go with those. For my background pieces, I am going to cut four squares, one for each triangle, and then I'm going to cut them in half diagonally. Each one of these squares is two and a half inches. Okay, so if I want, I can cut more than one at a time by stacking them on top of each other and just cutting them into half square triangles. Now for sewing, Let's start out with one of the tri one of the larger triangles, your goose unit. You're going to take one of your smaller background triangles and line it up so that the right angle of the smaller triangle hits at the center of the long side on the larger triangle and the, the angled edge lines up. Okay, so you'll see that the straight side lines up the angled edge lines up and you have a little bit of an overhang that's going to correspond right with your quarter inch seam allowance so you're going to you're going to sew a quarter inch from that angled edge and once again just like with the last one start with the center of the rectangle and sew out toward the pointed point you don't want to start down here because this area is going to get wrinkled up and chewed up by your feed dogs okay this gives me half of my flying geese and you can see 
when I open it up, it gives me that half shape like I started with before with the rectangle. I'm going to go to my iron and press. When you press these guys, since you do have a bias edge exposed here, you want to make sure that you're not doing any pull or stretching. Just put the iron down to, to flatten out the piece that you've just sewn and avoid any distortion on the other side. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing again, lining up the smaller triangle with the angled edge and flat side or long side of the larger triangle, just like I did before. Okay, and again, I'm going to start in the center and sew toward the pointed side. That means that my small triangle is going to be on the bottom for this one. All right, and voila. This gives me my second angle and my little flying goose. Let's get that pressed. Okay. Once I have these pressed, um, with the triangle method, I do need to trim my blocks so that they are the right size and to get rid of all of these little overhangy points from the seam allowance. So get it all pressed and this will give you an opportunity to make sure that everything is exactly the right size. You'll see that I want, I want them to be the same as the first ones I made, um, which is uh, two inches by three and a half. And you'll see that this one is a little bit bigger. It's more like three and three fourths. So first of all, I'm gonna line it up so that I have a straight line across the bottom from point to point. I also want to make sure that I have a quarter inch from the, above the point of my, of my triangle so that when I sew them together, I keep that crisp point, okay? So at the very top, I'm just going to trim off those, those corners and then also trim off the one on the side, okay? So let's see what my measurement is if I'm any closer to two by three and a half. See, I'm still about three and three fourths and a little bit over two. Again, check to make sure that you have your quarter inch seam allowance above your point. Trim off that corner. Straighten out your top. And now we are still at about three and three fourths. So that means that we need to take an eighth inch off of each side. Now luckily, when I trimmed it to two inches, I ended up with a tiny amount of extra lighter fabric on each end. So that's going to give me a little bit of leeway for trimming it down to three and a half. Okay, and still keeping my points. It's not going to be perfect. I think that's just the nature of this technique. I tend to, um, when I try to do it this way, they tend to end up a little bit bigger. But it's not, no problem to trim them down. Okay, so I'm still maintaining my two inches here. And I want to trim off the same amount on each side so that I'm getting down to three and a half. So it's going to be right around an eighth of an inch or pretty much exactly an eighth of an inch off of both sides so that I end up with my piece that is two, two inches wide by three and a half and it lines up with that first one I made. Okay, so that gives you, that's your two techniques. You can start with squares and rectangles. You can start with triangles. You're going to need to choose your favorite, and you're going to make f a total of eight flying geese units for our block number 19. Okay. Once you have sewn all eight of your flying geese using your favorite technique, you are going to be ready to sew them all together and complete your your block. Now in the original block that I have is the instructions on the website that you can get for free. I had them all going the same direction and I kind of like how this, especially since I use the same fabric in the background, I like how you get the effect of a row going up, a row going down, and a row going back the other direction. Of course you can play around with that. See what it looks like if you turn one side going the opposite direction. 
that's kind of fun too. You'd get a lot of movement going up, down, and then this kind of rhomboid shape in the middle. So lots of different possibilities. This is also, you're going to get a different look too if you use different colors for the flying geese. Or if you make your background different colors. You could make four with a dark background and four with a light background. So play around with that and get creative and see what is your favorite look. I think for this particular one, I really do like it with them all going the same direction. So that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, and for the easiest piecing, what I'm going to do is put them together in pairs. So I'll do those two. So across here, those two. And so across there, this is my chain piecing coming back into play to speed things up. So across there, and so those. So I'll, those, I'll sew those four units together. Then when I come back and press them, I'll have two like I'll have two sets like this, and then I can just sew those two halves together. I'll get a whole row. Now it's first two steps of sewing, and I have two set. I have two sets of four flying geese ready to go, and I want to make one point right here about pressing. So usually with with units like this, I would press toward each of the the larger triangles because that's going to reduce the bulk here at this point where all of your seams are coming together. You're going to um, have a little bit flatter seam if you press that way. But what I discovered is if I'm having all of my geese going the same direction, that would make it so that all of my seams were going the same way. And when I sew the block together, you're going to get a lot of thickness right here in the middle and it's not gonna be very pretty. So what I decided to do was go ahead and press all of the seams open. I didn't wanna do them opposite directions because that would create one side with a lot of bulk at the points. Um, so I went ahead, I felt like a good comp compromise was to go ahead and press them open. And that way when I go to sew the two halves together, I can match up those seams and you'll still have a little bit of bulk, but it's going to be distributed much better by having the seams pressed open. So I'm going to sew these together, keeping those seams open, and that's going to reduce my bulk. And then when I have them sewn, I will press that seam open, and it'll help keep my points nice and pointy and not get any big lumps where there's a lot of bulk. Okay, so let's sew that one to this, this together and we will have a finished block. We finished block number 19 of the Super Simple Sampler. In this video, we saw two ways of making flying geese units, which are really common in quilting and definitely a skill that everybody should have. Choose your favorite, make as many as you want, and these, these little blocks are so versatile and can go together in a lot of different ways, different looks and different colors. You're gonna use the same techniques um, as the first, the first way that I showed you with the triangles and squares. You'll also use that technique to make block number 36. You'll use a rectangle for the one propeller of the windmill and add a triangle to the inside piece. For block number 34, you're going to do the same thing by making little tiny flying geese units to create the square in a square, the square on point. Okay, so several of the blocks are going to use that technique of, of cutting a rectangle and then smaller squares, sewing them on the diagonal and flipping them over. It's super easy, super quick, and um, you can scale it to any size that you want and make a lot of different blocks out of it. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Be sure and leave a comment. Let me know what you think if you have questions, if you'd like to see more of something in the next video. Also, let me know if you're sewing along. I'd love to see your sampler blocks. Join me on Facebook or Instagram. Leave a comment on the blog. I love to hear from you. All right, until next time, thanks for joining me. If you're a colorful quilter, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you'll be notified whenever there's a new video. I'd love to have you join me and sew along.